I'm Ken Syke from Mason Sphere, uh, and you may be wondering, uh, this is a meeting on DAS and DigitalOcean. And uh, we uh, are excited about today because we have just launched uh, today uh, Mesosphere for DigitalOcean. So, yeah. <laughs> so if you're not familiar, um, <clears throat> what, uh, the question you might ask yourself is, what is Mesos or Mesosphere? And the way to answer that really is to ask another question is, when's the last time you've seen the fail whale? Uh, the death of the fail whale is directly contributed to Apache Mesos. Um, the reason why uh, Twitter scales to tens of thousands of nodes is because of Mesos. Um, so what's really exciting about where Deus is going is they have this pluggable architecture. Um, and seem, you know, everything that I've seen looks like it's going the right direction. And we have the ability to plug in uh, a scheduler, which is what Mesos is all about. Um, that has battle tested and is running in production environments that uh, I can't give the exact numbers out, <laughs> but tens of thousands of nodes uh, and, and growing. So that's pretty exciting stuff. So to give you just a quick tour of what it is and then I'll get off stage is uh, if you can imagine uh, what a Linux system looks like, you don't program against the Linux system. You program against higher APIs, so against a higher abstraction layer. And if you can imagine within the Linux space, what an init is, what an upstart is, what system D is all about. It's about maintaining an application and starting it and being a watchdog on that. So those two components, if you can uh, use that analogy, we considered Mesos as a distributed operating system. That's its feature, that's its function. In fact, if you can imagine uh, starting an application on your laptop and having it ask you a question, like which node do you want, what core do you want to run this on? That would be really weird. That's really strange, but yet we kind of expect that in our data center. Which node do you want to run this on? And we have humans that determine that. It's a really bizarre world. So our goal is to fix that. And the solution that we have is uh, Mesa Southern the cover of Marathon as an init process. And we want to hook that scheduler within uh, Deus, which we're working very closely together to make sure that happens. Also, uh, as strange as it may sound, because I know a lot of people would consider us competitors, uh, but we've started working closely with CoreOS as well. So I don't know what that will lead to. I don't have an answer for you with regard to that. Uh, I, I, I wholly think that we will have Mesosphere and Mesosphere, uh, or Mesos itself, running on CoreOS. In fact, we'll have documentation on how to do that uh, released this week as far as documentation goes. Uh, we're working very closely with Gabriel and his team on, on making sure that works within Deus. So what we have uh, today as announcement is if you go to digitalocean.mesosphere.com, uh, you will be able to launch today Mesos clusters within DigitalOcean. And just to give you a quick tour of that, um, I've, I've started one up, but as you might imagine, they take uh, you know five minutes to start, and I was given 10, so it wasn't going to take that long. But the workflow works similar to this on our main website, like the highest part of our website is this right here. So this is just mesosphere.com. Click learn more and you'll launch off to a starting point to launch this on DigitalOcean. Click this, say next, there's a process you'll go through. In this particular case, I've already created a cluster. If I wanted to create a new one, I just say new cluster. I selected a, a, a cluster that is the development cluster. You can see that it'll cost you a whopping 12 cents per hour to run a cluster in development, which means one master and three slaves, we would refer to them as. Um, I'm really excited because we have this similar service on, on Google, and uh, it would cost you an arm and a leg uh, to run a high availability cluster, and here we have it for 30 cents an hour. That's really amazing stuff. It's super amazing. Uh, we, are, we are adding in the ability, which is not out there yet, uh, to automatic, during provisioning, to firewall everything off so that uh, with an SSL connection into DigitalOcean, you will have um, the entire cluster uh, under SSL uh, which, and firewalled. So uh, that's, not, um, that's not entirely there yet, but it's close. So what I've done is I've launched a, clus a cluster, as I mentioned. When you do so, um, the end result is you can download your open VPN co configuration. As soon as you have that, it'll launch off tunnel, and you'll have a VPN connection from your laptop into the DigitalOcean. With that in place, you'll see some links at the top, which is Marathon, Kronos, and Mesos. Those are your gateway into managing the cluster. If we were to go to the Marathon uh, instance, I've actually previously started a Tomcat instance. Um, and so you can see that I have configured 
one Tomcat instance that's running on a half a CPU, there's one instance running, and there is 256 megs being used. Um, to give you an idea of what we can do with that, we can say, I want to scale it out, I want to scale it out to three, I hit enter. Um, it's now being provisioned, and three instances will be running in a second. Now, here's the cool part. This link right here is the actual node, uh, that uh, the Tomcat instance node. Uh, really? Let me see if that's running. Hold on a second. That may not have may not have hit the right. I might not might not have hit the same the right tab. Anyway, that is uh, Tomcat instance. It should be pulling up in a second. The cool part is, as you might uh, uh, have guessed, uh, we have a number of different ports, a number of different IP addresses that we're going to be at. Someone did not uh, pay tribute to the demo gods. Uh, sorry about that. We'll see what's happening. I got three nodes running. We'll see if we can get one of these up. Uh, the point is that I can hit e any one of the individual nodes from the links that you see up here, uh, but I can also hit the HA proxy that's in front of it. As soon as a, a service is up and running with the given port, it will automatically register with HA proxy as, with a front port. So you'll have a bunch of back end ports for your services with one front end port that you'll hit. All of that's automatically in place. So low balancing is handled by HA proxy, automatically provisioned in your cluster by the service we provide. So with that, I'll take any questions you have, because that's all I have. <laughs> Nothing? Okay. Yeah. Compare and contrast with Docker. Compare and contrast with Docker. Um, so uh, a couple of thoughts there. Um, the first is uh, Mesos, which has been around for some time, has had container technology that it's been using, which very closely aligns with Docker in the first place. So LXC, C groups, uh, and, and how we manage containers is very similar in nature. That's been around for a long time, pre-Docker for sure, okay? Um, but then the next uh, part of that question, or answering that question, is that uh, we came out with a number of solutions over the last couple of years of integrating with Docker. The latest is that it's fully baked in as a first class citizen within Mesos. So in this particular case, I launched a Tomcat instance and I launched it by um, having it download Tomcat in a service and launch it, you know, and, and, and spinning that off. And it is controlled within a C group. Uh, it is here, actually, I think I have an example of it. Um, let me set this mic down, sorry. I would agree that the UI that we, that, that we just witnessed is, is uh, lame. Everybody agree with that? It's pretty lame. Uh, it will list all the running services, allow you to scale up and down fairly easily, uh, but it could use some improvement, and we know that we're working on it. The RESTful API is very verbose, and within that RESTful API, we can launch things using JSON as a configuration, and this is an example of how you would launch a Docker container. So, and that's a first class citizen, there's nothing to do. Uh, you can do that right away uh, with what's deployed and provisioned with DigitalOcean. So uh, management of volumes, launching the Docker container, uh, seeing how many instances are running, launching by command or entry point, uh, going into bridge mode versus host mode, all of that's possible. So, good question. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I have any more to add on that, but it's, it's the, once you've launched uh, the, the API, oh, I know what I was going to show you. Uh, within uh, any of the tooling that we have, if you go to uh, Slant Help, you'll have full uh, documentation built into your running process of the RESTful API. So in this particular case, if I wanted to launch off uh, apps or see the existing apps, this is the get call to make, which is probably a pretty low resolution, uh, and, and the JSON that would be returned as a response. So uh, fully uh, manageable through automation with your own tooling. So we don't hide anything. So, anything else? Awesome. All right.